First introduced in the 1980s, He-Man was the titular protagonist of the renowned animated series, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. He soon became a well-loved character who inspired several comic series, spin-offs, and even movies, and he is still going strong even after over three decades. Ranging from his special sword powers to his physical prowess, He-Man is an iconic superhero who has gained strength from the power of Grayskull. Today, we will explore his physiological features and anatomy in detail, and tell you all about this pop culture icon. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. I have the power! Is He-Man human or an alien? While He-Man appears to originate from the planet of Eternia, he does have a human appearance, and it is safe to assume that he is at least half human. It so happened that He-Man's father, King Randor from Eternia, came across a human woman named Marlena and soon fell in love with her. He-Man's mother was an astronaut from Earth who had ended up crashing on Eternia due to an accidental mishap. Marlena soon crossed paths with King Randor, and the two of them fell for each other. In this way, one can say that He-Man is half alien and half human, since his father belongs to an alien race on Eternia while his mother is human. King Randor and Queen Marlena were blessed with twins Adam and Adora, while Adam went on to become He-Man. Adora was abducted by Hordak, and she was later even known as She-Ra. What is the source of He-Man's superpowers? Also known as Prince Adam, He-Man was blessed with the power of Grayskull by the sorceress of Castle Grayskull. There have been several versions of this tale, but they are mostly centered around the fact that Prince Adam could transform into He-Man by raising his power sword. This sword was connected to Castle Grayskull, and he also said the phrase, by the power of Grayskull, before putting the blade to use. Typically, He-Man kept his superhero identity a secret and appeared as Prince Adam until he needed to go on a mission to save someone or something. The power of Grayskull bestowed He-Man with some incredible powers, ranging from the ability to perform pyrotechnics to even enabling him to unleash electricity from his sword. In fact, one comic series even explores a storyline where He-Man and Adora work together to save numerous people and animals that were kidnapped by the evil Hordak. While Hordak wanted to absorb their souls and grow stronger, He-Man decided to unleash the power of Grayskull to destroy Hordak. He unleashed a powerful wave of electricity that destroyed Hordak's base and got rid of his forces. He then went ahead to defeat Hordak and free all the the people being held captive, while Adora was visibly stunned by the extent of He-Man's powers. The power of the Grayskull not only helped He-Man defeat Hordak and save many lives, but it also inspired Adora to finally leave Hordak's forces and pursue a new life as She-Ra. Is there a limit as to how long He-Man can remain in his transformed state? In order to switch his appearance, Prince Adam requires the Sword of Power to turn into He-Man and return to his normal state. It has been established that there is no time limit for how long he can remain in his transformed state, and He-Man can stay in this form for as long as he likes. In fact, an episode of the animated He-Man series also explored a situation where He-Man had lost his Sword of Power during an earthquake, and a group of rock monsters then found the sword. These rock monsters tried to use the sword to become leaders, but they soon realized that the sword was useless to them. They even threw the sword down a chasm, while He-Man was in despair over the fact that he would never be able to turn into Prince Adam again. While He-Man was sure he would have to remain in his transformed state forever, Orko somehow retrieved his sword and enabled He-Man to turn into Adam again. In this way, He-Man did not have a time limit on his appearance, and he only relied on the sword of power in order to transform. However, there have been a few instances where He-Man drained all his energy and turned back into Prince Adam without even realizing it. How physically strong is He-Man? He-Man is sometimes even referred to as the most powerful man in the universe, and he possesses superhuman strength and reflexes. While different versions of the character have unique powers and abilities, He-Man's strength is something that remains constant across all retellings. In a booklet that came with the first He-Man action figure collection, it was stated that he is strong enough to even crack open rocks with his bare hands. Later on, the DC Comics version of He-Man once even fought against Superman, and he later also displayed his strength by lifting Castle Grayskull with just his hands and then throwing it away. All versions of He-Man had an enhanced strength that enabled him to perform feats that were beyond the scope of humans, but he is also portrayed as a non-violent character who avoids engaging in combat unless absolutely required. He also has quick reflexes and can deflect any attack or even move around speedily to attack someone. He is also quite acrobatic and has enhanced motor skills and the mighty sword of power that grants him a wide range of powers.
Is he really the most powerful man in the universe? He-Man owns the mighty sword of power, which connects him to the power within Castle Grayskull on Eternia. Since Eternia is a powerful civilization with a rich history, one can safely assume that He-Man does gain an incredible amount of knowledge and skill just by being associated with the sword of power. In this sense, He-Man is the most powerful man in his own fictional universe, and the intro sequence in the original He-Man series even emphasizes this fact. We have also seen various scenarios where He-Man has thrown an entire castle on his own and showcased his strength in several other ways as well. However, he has earned this title only in his own fictional universe, and this doesn't mean that he is the most powerful man in any fictional universe. For instance, someone like the Hulk or Superman might be the most powerful beings in the respective Marvel or DC universes. In this sense, He-Man holds the title of the most powerful man in this universe, at least until someone stronger shows up and challenges him. Just a boy! And that boy is holding all the power of the universe in his bed! Exploring the true powers of his special sword, He-Man did not have to worry about carrying an arsenal of weapons, as he always had the sword of power to rely on. This sword was an incredibly powerful piece of weaponry, and it even drew its magical powers from Castle Grayskull on Eternia. The sword could cut through any material, and its magical energy enhanced He-Man's strength and made him more powerful. In the original series, the sword could also shoot energy blasts and deflect bullets or other such attacks. The power sword was considered a mystical object, and it also had the ability to wield or create new weapons that would aid He-Man in his fights. The sword also allowed He-Man to become a skilled swordsman and even achieve transcendent proficiency in swordsmanship. He-Man could also wield universal power through the sword, which was essentially an infinite force of the universe that enabled its user to assert dominance over any aspect of nature. The sword of power effectively granted godlike power to its user, and He-Man was certainly quite blessed to have the opportunity to wield it. Does Prince Adam have the same powers as He-Man without transforming? Prince Adam typically portrayed himself as a carefree prince in the royal court, and his parents even considered him a coward. In this sense, Prince Adam was not admired as much as his He-Man persona, mainly because he always had to leave the room to transform and return as a superhero. Prince Adam was quite powerful as He-Man, and he also had the sword of power that enabled him to defeat his opponents. However, Prince Adam did not possess these powers on his own, and he had to transform into He-Man in order to gain access to them. As Prince Adam, He-Man was just a vulnerable human being, and he could not achieve much in this persona. While this is the general notion regarding the powers of Prince Adam from the majority of He-Man lore, there is a crucial exception that we will explore in the following segment. Savage and animalistic He-Man who transformed without the Sword of Power. This shocking twist was unraveled in the second season of Masters of the Universe, Revelation. Skeletor managed to defeat He-Man and the latter was severely injured in a near-dead situation. To make matters worse, Skeletor took over the magical sword, and he almost attained god-level powers with this addition. The sorceress pulled off a miraculous distraction to save the lives of He-Man and his friends. But Prince Adam was now vulnerable without the sword to protect him. Or was he? When Skeletor later confronted he man he discovered that the sword was only a conduit for his powers and the real ability remained dormant in him all along. Prince Adam then transformed into a savage and animalistic version of He-Man even without the sword, and he looks like a giant version of He-Man, which will remind you of the Hulk in his berserker rage moments. However, this savage He-Man seemed to have little control over his powers. In an infuriated state, he fought Skeletor, and later, he even turned on his own father. It turned out that Prince Adam had a dormant grudge against his father for never appreciating him enough. In this uncontrolled state, it simply translated to anger, and it took some kind words from his father to keep him calm. We can infer that the Sword of Power enabled He-Man to serve with sanity, and transformation without the sword could grant him access to supreme powers, but without the brain functions to have adequate restraint. The series also revealed that the Sword of Power was not the weapon for the ordinary because one needed to be capable and mature enough to handle the powers. Man at Arms explained how Prince Adam was a true hero for knowing his boundaries and exercising the powers with a healthy dose of responsibility. Skeletor couldn't bring himself to give up the extreme power after possessing it. Also, Skeletor seemed to be more agitated, arrogant, and dismissive of everyone else ever since he got the extra powers. If you consider this series to be canonical, which it is, then the Sword of Power got a whole new meaning, and we learned a crucial secret about Prince Adam, which wasn't explored in almost three decades of He-Man. Do you think I couldn't defend against your attack? <laughs> that attack is called a hug, Tila. Can He-Man have kids? 
He-Man is essentially half-human, and there is no reason why he cannot have kids in the form of Prince Adam. In fact, he also has a long history of romance with Tila, who is the captain of the Royal Guard and also in charge of Prince Adam's training. While Adam turned into He-Man, Tila often assisted him in his missions, but she was unaware of his true identity. Nevertheless, they soon got close enough to form a romantic relationship. In fact, the creators of He-Man had also suggested a spin-off series featuring He-Man and Tila's son. Since the studio wanted to attract the new generation of viewers, they devised a storyline where He-Man and Tila are the rulers of Eternia, and they also have a son named Hero. On the other hand, the evil Skeletor also has a son named Skeletine, and the creators eventually planned to pit Hero and Skeletine against each other. In this storyline, Eternia was facing a new threat, and He-Man and Skeletor had both decided to send their sons to a distant future where they eventually came across each other. However, the creators finally decided against this idea, and they released the new adventures of He-Man, featuring original characters such as He-Man, Tila, and Skeletor in the end. However, just the idea behind this spinoff suggests that the creators had thought of a future where He-Man has a son with Tila, and this clearly establishes the fact that he can most certainly have kids. Exploring some of the other superpowers possessed by He-Man. Besides having superhuman strength and reflexes, He-Man also has a wide range of powers, such as tornado manipulation or even matter manipulation. These superpowers have mostly been depicted in the animated series and have not been included in the films or comics. Tornado manipulation refers to He-Man's ability to turn himself into a tornado by simply spinning his sword around. This power allowed him to deflect the course of an object that had been thrown towards him, and it also enabled him to fly short distances. Sometimes he-Man even created a vacuum when he ran at high speed. He also had the ability to turn sand into glass by rubbing his hands together, and he could even blow powerful gusts of wind and knock his opponents down by simply breathing in their direction. In some episodes, He-Man possessed unique superpowers that helped him eliminate a threat in that particular episode. For instance, he once fixed a broken chain by just connecting the two broken pieces, and he once even adjusted the orbit of one of Eternia's moons by simply pushing it back into its course. He also showed great resistance to magic, and he could also manipulate cosmic electricity by performing cosmic electrokinesis. What are some of He-Man's noticeable weaknesses? While He-Man is the most powerful man in the universe, he does have a few weaknesses that can help his opponents defeat him. One such weakness is his inexperience when it comes to violence, as well as his hesitancy to actually succumb to violent means to defeat his opponents. He typically relies on his sort of power to defeat his opponents through magical means or other strategic means. In this way, he might have difficulty fighting against someone with a history of violence, especially if he loses his sword. Another issue is that He-Man does not have many weapons at his disposal, and he only relies on his sword in every situation. If he were to ever lose his sword, He-Man would be completely vulnerable and exposed to his opponents. In extreme scenarios, He-Man can also revert to his human form if he uses a lot of his strength or if he is exposed to extreme force. Moreover, He-Man's transformation process also comes with a huge disadvantage, leaving him exposed to his opponents. In order to turn into He-Man, Prince Adam needs to hold the Sword of Power and yell, I have the power, in order to transform. Anybody in close vicinity can easily hear He-Man yelling out loud and then locate him in a moment's time. Moreover, Prince Adam also releases a specific energy signature every time he uses the sword to turn into He-Man, and even this energy can easily help others to locate him. In one particular comic issue, Adora attacks King Randor's palace along with the Horde troopers in search of He-Man while Prince Adam sneaks away to transform into He-Man. Adora then tracks the location of the energy signatures and locates him in no time. While Prince Adam's ability to turn into He-Man has helped him save countless lives, his transformation process makes it impossible for him to act stealthily. Conclusion. While He-Man does have a few weaknesses, he is certainly quite a powerful superhero with a wide range of cool powers at his disposal. With the power of Grayskull behind him, He-Man has created quite a legacy for himself as well as for the entire Masters of the Universe franchise. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone.